Communications antenna. Riley. Hello, I finally managed to locate the system they sent you in. I don't have much time, but I'll try to give you some advice. The success rate of Planet Crafters is low because it's nearly an impossible task. You should find the space food in your pod and maybe in space in space racks. You'll be able to grow food by yourself when you meet the correct requirements, so try to find some vegetable seeds. Exploration and improvement are essentials. Explore and improve your equipment to increase your chances of survival. I hope this message will reach you. And we're back for another episode of The Planet Crafter. I'm Spark with Sparkfield Gaming. And in the last episode, we checked out an old wreck, started up a new world, and be whoa! Began working towards the terraformation of this planet. For this episode, I think I want to visit the castle area as well as the other wreck. But for right now, actually. Well, let's see how much how far I have to go before I can get an indoor ladder. That's 500. Almost there. Let's make another heater. I still have plenty of power available. Veggie tube. Look, tier two. Okay, what does that take to make? Uh, ice, ice baby. I don't know the words. Provides 150% oxygen multiplier. How much does the the ligma. Oh, just provide. It just starts it. Drill. Tier 2 build. Oh, what's look with my tongue? I think my tongue just committed suicide. What? Why are you floating? the sound is all right so let's see backpack tier three okay what does that take crud nuggets I don't think I have any element enough aluminium well what do you know I do titanium and silicone I think I saw a s that works I think it was actually behind that rock that I saw the silicone Yeah, right there. No way it was that one. I don't remember. It was last episode. It was like... Seven minutes ago. Okay. We can also explore off in that direction. And... Rip. You need help. Oh, okay then. Alright. I get more food. Then we go to check out shit. I don't have enough I don't have any food. I would say the sound in this game is pretty realistic, but given that this planet currently has no atmosphere and therefore there's nothing for the vibrations to bounce off of, there really shouldn't be any sound on this world at all. Ooh. 
Let's see. I think it's already hot up in here. Alright, so let's go check out that other wreck. Or first I'll put the second iron down as a storage crate. Just to empty out one extra space in my inventory. It's clear that whatever this planet is, it's a frickin' Bermuda Triangle for ships. Oh, that does not look safe. Indoor ladder. Oh, aluminium. The thing I don't like about this game is the fact that every time you disassemble something, it gives you an extra iron, and that's something that you really can't afford. Like, it, your inventory of space is a valuable resource. Is that seriously all that's in here? Ah. That was a small wreck. So this is what aluminium looks like in the wild. Very shiny, very reflective. Also, for the first few... Uh, for the first hour, hour and a half of the game, I would strongly recommend hoarding as many food packets as you can find. Since, to make the veggie tube, it actually requires you would have quite a few index, I believe, air index points. Oh, I could just go in there and for some air. It'd probably just be worthwhile if I just went back to my base. Though my original save the base was actually quite a bit more centered than that area, so... I regret nothing! Oh. Weak. Aloy, Aloy there, how are you? All right, so let's see <laughs> what these do. Another mining chip. And a pumpus chip. Okay, that I can work with. Ah! Okay. So soon I'll be able to make a new heater so I can hopefully get the exoskeleton tier 2.
that was Hey! What the You gonna pay for that? Aha, the choo choo heater. Two iridium, one aluminum, one. Ah! Uh, uh, that's gonna drive me insane. Alright. That's getting out there pretty quickly. Kind of, I guess. Now let's head off in this direction. Actually, let's deposit this magnesium, then head off in that direction. Or actually, no. I'm, I'm going to see if I can't get the golden seed. Because I know where it is. It's in a golden ch At least in the demo version. I don't know if they moved it. Oh, also, that's the castle. I know it doesn't look like a castle, but given how blocky it just, just dead this whole planet looks, it's a castle. Don't question it. So the gold chest is located in this area, on the far north side of it. And trust me, you'll know when you see it. This is also a place where you can find aluminum. Now let me see, it was hidden underneath one of these things. Aha, there it is. Progress screen. Okay, so if you look down in the bottom left, you can check my coordinates to see where this is. So what do we get here? We get a golden seed, golden effigy, iridium rod, uranium rod, iridium, uranium, two aluminum. And if you have a... Uh... If you have the deconstructor chip with you, you can even get an aluminum and super or aluminium and super uh, alloy. You can name things in this game. Whoa! I did not know that. Also, you're going to want to hoard it iridium because it's a key component for the heaters, so yeah. I will see you back at my base. Actually, first let's check what's in this box. Nothing, okay. Ah... Uh... I recall one time I was playing Astroneer by myself, and my character got stuck in the air somehow. And for some reason, whenever you're in the air, even if you're only like a couple inches off the ground, your character goes into his falling animation. And he picks up speed while in said falling animation. So if you're not careful, you could be picking up speed, not even intending to, and then when you hit, even though you were only like a couple inches off the ground, you will go splat. Right, okay, so we got... Living Compartment Corner? And Recycling Machine. Gonna get you out of there and chuck that arm in there. Now, I don't know if you saw... 
this gives you 600%. Actually, hold on. Yeah. So I didn't know this was a thing. Alright. Now let me think. What else can I do for this episode? I guess I could work towards upgrading my oxygen tank again. Right, I need to build another veggie tube. And I know that there's another wreck deeper inside. Like, there's a wreck somewhere that has lots and lots of seeds in them. Are we already- so are we due for, uh, replenishing already? Let's actually go in this direction. I know there are other wrecks in this way, over here. Uh, let's see, do I have, I do not have enough water. Hey, watch, I need to... Whoa! That literally just yo yeeted me up in the air. I honestly wonder, these, do, do these things hurt me? They didn't in the pre-alpha, uh, pre-release. Oh, I didn't even see how much health I had before that. Why am I trying to get hit by a meteor? Okay, let's try to get hit by that one. Not gonna happen. Communications antenna. Holy. Alright, let's build that. Actually, I'm pretty sure I was at full health. Right, yeah, because I ate something on the way. Oh my god, those do a lot of damage. I just want to say right now, I think it's really cool how they designed it so that the meteor showers is what replenishes the resources on this planet. I've often thought that if scientists know that uh, water exists in comets and we're running low on water, when life gives you lemons, even if they're thousands of miles away in space, send unmanned rovers to retrieve them. If nothing else, we'll get to learn if xenomorphs are real. <laughs> Alright, we're good. You suck ass. Well, fortune, our Lord and Savior Cthulhu hath provided for us. Wait, what am I saying? Curb Cthulhu. Yeet, 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 yeet. Now, there's just one issue. I can't actually use this yet. In order to do that, I need this. Which requires... Oh, you. No, I don't, I can't, I can't, I can't, ah! Silicone, I need two silicone. Where does it, oh. 
Our Lord Sir fits our eyes. My tongue commits suicide again. Our Lord and Savior Kerbthulu may ha may have provided for us, but I don't know where he put it. Help me, Kerbthulu. All right, so we got a message. Okay, so we have two. One from Sentinel Corp. And one from... R Rylan. Ooh, I wonder... You choose to communicate your sentence into extradition. Into an extradition. If you want to be released of all charges pending against you, you'll have to fully terraform this planet. Our sensors will periodically scan your progress and will send you the required blueprints. Do not try to contact Sentinel Corp in any case. If our sensors do not detect any advancement of terraformation process, you'll be considered missing and charges won't be dropped. You cannot claim property or value over anything on the planet. You are only allowed to use the resources found to increase the terraformation index. You are not allowed to leave the planet until terraformation is complete. Riley. Hello, I finally managed to locate the system they sent you in. I don't have much time, but I'll try to give you some advice. The success rate of planet crafters is low because it's nearly an impossible task. You should find space food in your pod and maybe in, spa in space racks. You'll be able to grow food by yourself when you meet the correct requirements, so try to find some vegetable seeds. Exploration and improvement are essentials. Explore and improve your equipment to increase your chances of survival. I hope this message will reach you. Okay, so Riley and Sentinel Corp. Fun fact, the main character in Subnautica was named Riley. Riley Robinson. Now, this game wasn't actually created by Unknown Worlds. Though it's clear that the, from the technology that it's based on Altera Corp. And interestingly enough, Altera doesn't just appear in Sonatica. It actually is has appeared in a much, much, much older game. I believe Perfect Dark is what it's called. So, perhaps Sentinel Corp is a transgov or in some way like an enclave of Altera? Because, if you'll recall, one of the uh, dialogues to between uh, Samantha Ayu and Marguerite Maida in Sunaka Below Zero, Maida accused the Transcorp Govs of being corrupt, and it sounds like this mission was destined to fail. Does this mean we could be in the same universe as Subnautica? Does this mean we could be seeing, like, the follow-up to Subnautica? I, I, I highly doubt it, but, but who knows? That would be so awesome. But one thing that's not awesome is finding out we're a freaking criminal. Okay, so let's see. If I want to explore really far out, I need to make myself a tier 3 oxygen tank. And in order to do that... Iron... Oh joy, we have a sandstorm. I really don't know what sandstorms do. Well, it's the first one of this save, so we might see what they actually do. 
I think it'd be fun if there were, or cool if there was like a mechanic that um that the sand like got into your breathing apparatus and it caused to caused your air to drain faster. That's that would be my take on what it would do. It does make it harder to tell what the heck I'm looking at. Making it really difficult to locate any silicone. Two hundred and eighty. Right, let's see how much further I have to go before I can make a food belt grower. Okay, so I still have a ways to go. All right, in that case, I'll head off in this direction. See if I can't find some more. I know there aren't any wrecks off in this direction. At least not ones that I know for a fact have seeds. They might, but I am not sure. And remember what I said earlier about how there shouldn't be any sound on this plant because there's no discernible atmosphere? Why can I hear this dude's footsteps? One thing I'm really looking forward to is seeing what's back here. Oh, and here's another place that you can stock up on some uh, iridium. Iridium is, is almost always found in caves or wrecks. I don't think it drops in during meteor showers. Ah. Uh. Yeah, sure, let's go with this. Uh, uh. Parista, or Paresta. New message. Alright, let's go back and see what that is. Sentinel Corp. Your plan specifications. Identification. Unnamed. Corporation ownership unclaimed. Habitability level null. Sector Isitial Prime. History unknown. Unnamed planet is located in the Isitial Sector, a pre civilization sector crossed mostly by trade ships to travel between big spaceports. The sector count planet 842 and Oh, 842 planets and 13,511 stars. It is seven parsecs wide, okay? It has been unidentified as one possible candidate for full colonization. Okay, so I guess they expect you to get the this thing earlier in game, but if they wanted that to be, I would have thought they would have made it like a default, whatever. Double bed. Wait. You can't actually sleep in the demo version, but can you sleep in this version? Nope. Oh. Ooh, this is a pretty looking plant. I like that. That was very close. 
actually, now that I think of it, this plant does seem to have enough of an atmosphere to cause friction when the meteors re-enter the atmosphere. I just want to clarify, I'm not an astronomer. Ah, how that literally straight up mashed my face. Ooh, that was a bad move. That was a very bad move. Oh, thank God I have that. Oh, and also, I guess some of you are probably going to want me to set this up. Are we... Uh, so we went from s meteor storm to sand storm. Golden effigy. Although, let's be honest, we all know what that looks like. Alright, I'm going to make myself a living quarters, then I'm going to call the episode. I think once... I think the terraformation is complete when you don't have to worry about your oxygen level, because that's... <sighs> food grower. Perfect. Where is... And a new exoskeleton. All right. Now, what does it take to make a double bed? It, it obviously requires uh, creates floor or ceiling. Double bed. Single bed requires three fabric. I think I'll put my bed right there. A new message. Seriously? Riley. Alright, I managed to sneak more information. I'm seriously thinking whoever designed this game has a slightly imperfect understanding of the English language. Uh-oh. I managed to sneak more information. I read that you have more chance of success if you build a base in altitude. Not sure... Why, for now. And if you manage to heat the planet off, some cave should become accessible in the ice melt. At least one... And one last thing you can... I don't like the look of this right here at all. Which I guess I'll put right... This thing literally 3D prints food. So I can't sleep, it's just for show. Joy.
So that adds nine new, or uh, seven new slots. Also, I want to make a progress screen. So, two silicone, one cobalt, and one iron. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought cobalt was poisonous. If that's the case, then how does this dude get air from it? I recall hearing about a story of House MD where a person's artificial knee had some bone fragments or something getting rubbed up against it and it wore down the metal and they started getting cobalt poisoning. Or maybe it was a hip, I don't remember. It was an artificial joint. Alright, so we're twenty four percent. Twenty five, all right. That just looks so wrong. Okay. So I think in the next episode we are going to explore the castle. I noticed there was a massive desert and wreck over in that direction. And there was what appeared to be a warp gate off in that direction as well, behind those rocks. So we still have a lot to do and explore. But we're going to have to save that for the next episode. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's go for 5 likes on this. No, 10 likes. Yeah, 10 likes. A lot of developments in this story. In case you'll have a good rest of your day, night, whatever time of day it is when watching. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.